welcome. It's another episode with Todd, Pratik, and Ryan about the flow metrics in Scrum. This time we're talking about the retrospective, the sprint retrospective. Gentlemen, this one might be a little bit different. Um, I think people might scratch their heads at first and say, wait a minute. This is about team improvement. This is about relationships and process. How could the flow metrics possibly help us? And again, the flow metrics are cycle time, throughput, item aging, and whip limits. And so when we think about the sprint retrospective, perhaps it's not as data-driven as it ought to be. And so perhaps you guys can help with this. What are the flow metrics, if any, right? Again, I don't want to assume that they work here. So which ones, which ones would you recommend? How would you use them? And uh, let's dig into that. So what do you think, Pratik? Let's start with you. Retro, yeah. what do you do with the flow metrics? It's kind of similar to what we talked about with the with the daily scrum. I would say there's a, this time uh, it's a little ch flipped, but it's cycle time. Th that's our main metric with an assist from WIP, yeah. uh, with an assist from mm -hmm. work in progress. But uh, I think main metric that we're going after here is cycle time. Yeah, I think there's a lot of different ways we can go after it too, right? Um, just uh, something like, uh, so we always talk in, you know, us, us, uh, us scrum dorks, right? We, we always talk in terms of uh, inspection, adaptation, and transparency. Yep. Um, and there's a lot of different options of things that you can bring in for inspection, right? Um, here. Uh, so, I mean, for instance, you might take a look at a cycle time scatter plot. What do you think about that, Pratik? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's the the you know, I was gonna say the original, but the first um, the the first scientific way of doing inspection and adaption were, in my opinion, Walter Schuett's control charts and Russell's behavior charts that came in after that. And the simpler version that we use are these scatter plots, which just to to kind of draw a picture with words here. Uh, a cycle time scatter plot shows you how long it took for each. Thing that you started to finish, which is your cycle time. It just lays it out on a timeline to say on April 3rd, something finished and it took 10 days. So there'll be a dot on your cycle time start a plot 10 days high on April 3rd. On May 1st, something finished and it took five days. There'll be a dot five days high on, on uh, at May 1st on your cycle time scatter plot. And if you keep doing that, you get a random collection of dots, mm -hmm. which can tell you a story. Yeah. yeah, generally with the horizontal axis being um, time, right? Mm -hmm. Like date, and then the vertical axis being number of days, right? Mm -hmm. exactly. So in that kind of situation, are you looking at outliers? Are you looking at, you know, why did something take, did this get stuck? Is there an impediment? Is there a, a way that we've defined our workflow process that's wrong? I mean, are those the types of discussions you would expect a cycle time scatter plot to, to trigger? Yeah, any and all of those, absolutely. I and mean, oh. that that that's what we would like teams to do. Are there patterns emerging? Uh, if there was an outlier, was it a true outlier, or did it just look like an outlier? Did we just forget to close this thing? Mm -hmm. um, sure. Yeah. What what are, what are the different things that are coming up here, which we as a team can come together and do better uh, next time around? Now, you also mentioned an assist from WIP limits. Can you mm -hmm. elaborate a little bit on that? Um. Going back to, again, we went to Walter Schuert, so we should also go to Dr. Little. Uh, going back to Little's law, which talks about a relationship between the major flow metrics, at least three of them, um, cycle time, whip, and throughput. What Little's law tells us is that cycle time is hugely influenced by whip. The higher a whip, most likely, the higher our cycle time. Now, if we as a team, as a, as a scrum team, are looking at our cycle time scatter plot and it's telling us that most of the time, 80% of the time, we get things done in, say, 20 days or less. Meanwhile, we are running two-week sprints. Something is off that it's, it's so much larger than our sprint length. One of the main reasons that usually happens is because our whip is too high because we're working on too many things at the same time. And that that's the assist that WIP provides. Might be too high, might even be variable. That's a completely different topic that we should talk about another time. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, I really like where you're going with this. And I really like that how we, we've talked about some of these different things we can inspect. We've talked about cycle time. We've talked about <clears throat> whip, right? And we've talked about different aspects of those that could be made transparent, right? Maybe you had an outlier. Maybe you're starting to see patterns. Maybe our whip is too high, right? Um, which I think leads us to things that this would help us adapt that we may not adapt before. Um, and um, I'm going to kick that conversation off with saying, Maybe this is an opportunity for us to look at our service level expectation. What do you think of that, Jean? Yeah, maybe it's 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 maybe we need to look at our service level expectation uh, even further. Maybe we need to look at things like uh, the reason our whip is too high is because we we don't help each other out too much. This set of people stay in this area. This set of people stay in this area, and there's a huge queue in the middle, mm -hmm. which causes mm -hmm. things to take take a long time. All those things start coming into play if we. If our service level expectation is 20 days or less and we want it to be five days or less, well, what are our options? Mm -hmm. How do we inspect and adapt our individuals and interactions as well? Yeah, and that could lead us to a conversation about how, like you were just saying there, um, everybody goes in different directions. So what if this next sprint we try to limit our whip? Right. Uh, maybe we're not maybe or maybe we're not paying attention to the whip limits that we set on particular stages or as the board as a whole. And those are interesting conversations. Not always easy ones to implement. I will tell you that I've had a, a varying levels of experience. Um, but the people that really get what working on a team that has a limited whip, uh, what what it's like to do that, and the feeling that you get working as a team will never go back. Um, but sometimes it can take a little bit of um, a little nudging, let's, let's say, <laughs> for people to be convinced that that. Uh, just because we're working on something doesn't mean we're finishing anything, right? Yeah, it, it definitely sparks those types of conversations and uh, can certainly help us in those areas. Um, I also wonder as far as improvement. So if we're looking at uh, cycle time outliers, it, you know what it makes me think of is, Todd, we, we've talked about this a number of times on, on different podcasts. We get this question a lot. You know, What do you do with a team that says they don't have anything they need to improve on? Right. Hey, we're everything's fine. Uh, usually, so I've had this two or three times in my career, and I've actually pulled up um, cycle time and looked at the scatter plot. And there's always an outlier. Um, I, I generally, I mean, just the it, through the complexity of work, there's general, there's typically going to be an outlier within a data set. Um, now that's not 100 percent true. Sometimes there's not, but with the teams, there's 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 always been an outlier when when they've made this comment. And so like, yeah, I know y'all are doing great. We're getting some things delivered. What was that? What caused that? And then you start talking through and it's a build server was busted or we lack some, and suddenly an issue pops up that we can actually talk about. And so when people ask, you know, what do you do with a team that says they have nothing to improve on? Let's look at the scatter plot and see if there's outliers and let's spark. And it's not to condemn or to judge or to get, um, defensive or anything. It's just to spark a conversation. And I, that's what I like about these metrics. The metrics don't tell the story. They're a signal that there's a story that needs to be told, right? And I want to make sure we're real clear on that. It's not about the data. It's about the underlying story behind the data that we're trying to mine and, and pull out. And so in that case, that that cycle time scatter plot gave us this, this variable that was the variable to the normal data set. And we said, hey, what happened there? And as it turned out, that led to a great conversation and helped us figure out what we could improve for the next sprint. Yeah, the, as, as we've talked through all these metrics and all these events, um, what we've really tried to do is bring a little bit of uh, an objective lens to yep. what are usually otherwise subjective events. And it doesn't mean that the subjectivity doesn't come in later on. It just means you lead from the objective side and yeah. then get to the, the the deeper subjective discussion. Well, and you guys, when you guys are both talking about process improvement, what's great about bringing these metrics in is that you can then say after a sprint or two whether or not you move the needle in a positive mm -hmm. or negative direction. Now, whether it's causation or correlation, that's a different video. Yeah. Um, you're, I mean, it's not a controlled test environment, but you can at least have a hunch a, with some subjective, I'm sorry, with objective data that says, yeah, I think that improvement, you know, we, we changed, we lowered our whip limits and suddenly we're getting things done in a sprint. That's a good signal, 
right? And now we can elaborate on that and try to maximize the value of that change and do a lot of good things. So yeah, in the retrospective, I think uh, cycle time is a great place to look um, with a, that assist from a service level expectation standpoint and WIP limits. And I think that's a great place to start. And if you're struggling with a team that we're not sure where to improve, I think those outliers can generate excellent conversations. Anything else you guys would add before we wrap this one up? It can be as simple as just bringing in a cycle time scatter plot and saying, what do you all make of this? Yeah. Yep. That could be your first conversation. It's a great way to kick it off. Okay. All right. Let's take a quick look here. If these conversations have been interesting for you, I think you're going to love the flow metrics for Scrum Teams course that Todd, myself, and Daniel Vacanti are teaching in March. Uh, there's going to be a lot of other offerings for that. If, if you're watching this video after March 7th, 2023, I guarantee if you go to our site, we likely have one posted up here. If not, we can certainly connect you to a class. Uh, this is going to help you out. And so two days of digging deeper into these topics. Uh, Pratik here is doing a lot of teaching as well. He'll be doing applying professional Kanban, applying metrics for predictability, and agile work slicing. Uh, you're not going to want to miss these. So check out the links in the description. And we'll get you hooked up with either the flow metrics for Scrum Teams or one of the offerings from Pratik. We're sure you're going to enjoy all of those, and we hope you can make it. Uh, guys, I think we're going to close this one out. Really nice job. Appreciate both of you taking the time to walk through these concepts. And uh, I hope everyone else got a lot out of it. Let us know in the comments. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe so you never miss a video. We're going to have a lot more uh, content like this in the future, so be sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell so you don't miss it. Uh, check out us, check out our socials. We've got a lot going on on Twitter and LinkedIn, especially some videos are going to pop up. We think you'll enjoy them. Be sure to comment. Your questions could turn into future videos. And, uh, those are the best types of videos because it's di directly helping you in a real situation. So be sure to do that as well. All right. For Todd and Pratik, I'm Ryan. Go out, measure some stuff, improve some stuff get things to done and we'll see you next time.